You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for The Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Monday. It is time to fire up the crypto rundown here on the old network to talk about all the action outside of our traditional stomping grounds. Not talking your Apples, Teslas, NVIDIAs, or Spies, or Vixes on the show today. Nope, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin, the ETH, all that fun, and a whole bunch more crypto-related names, and a whole bunch of fun. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com as well as from the network upon which all of you folks have been mainlining these days. Interesting events, to say the least, popping off since our last show, so a lot to unpack out there. Of course, if you want even more content in your lives, then by all means, head on over to the pro. The optionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. As we learn who's joining us on the old program today, I'm pleased to welcome back for his pretty much monthly appearance here now on the old Crypto Rundown our old friend, Mr. Greg Magadini from Amber Data. Greg, welcome back to the Crypto Rundown program. Thanks, Mark. Happy to be here as usual. It's a very exciting market right now. It looks like we're finally getting a little bit of a bump back. So excited to talk about all the stuff. Yeah, not much popping off in the, in the crypto markets at all right now. You might as well just end the show now. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call this the lowest fall we've seen, that's for sure. No, we'll get to all that fun, all that big price action in a second. I'm very curious for you, though. Obviously, the last 48 hours have been somewhat tumultuous, to say the least. Crypto, one of the few markets that is actually open during when you know all the madness was popping off earlier this weekend. So outside of the initial news, one of the first things I noticed, of course, was on my phone, all of a sudden getting a wide variety of alerts from a lot of the crypto names I have installed, like Coinbase and others, saying, oh, this crazy little coin that I've never heard of before is moving 300% now. So there was a lot of strange, aberrant moves we saw over the past 48 hours. Anything catching your eye in the immediate impact of that crazy news we saw over the weekend? Yeah, for sure. Well, obviously, like, um, you know, given the assassination attempt, the Trump meme coins... Uh, responded uh, with a rally. But what's really interesting is that uh, Trump has been 
sort of the pro crypto pres- presidential nominate nominee or you know potential candidate. And so what we're seeing here is that as his odds of presidency go up, the Bitcoin market has been going up as well. So we're seeing a really kind of an explosive move uh, since July 13th higher. July 13th, we're kind of hanging out at the $58,000 level, and now we're at the 63500 level, so about 5.5K higher, um, which is about 10% in percentage terms. So this is a this is an interesting move, and we could see it to continue. Let's get into that move then with a little bit of the old Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Breakdown. Breakdown. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down. The week that was and indeed still is on the old big dog front, a.k.a. BTC. Greg kind of let the cat out of the bag. We are a wee bit higher since our show last week. Scratch that a lot higher. (laughs) Uh, We were at 54,317 on our show last week. Coming in to start the show today, 63,636. So you're close to 10,000 handles higher from where we were this time last week. 9,319. To be precise, the high is pretty much right now as we're talking here on the show. Uh, the low came pretty much during our show last week, 54,317. So our show coming at two pivotal moments, at least price action-wise here in Bitcoin. So a lot of action there. I'll get into all the vol and all the other fun from the data we crunch from your platform in a second here, Mr. Greg. Uh, but you kind of just mentioned Trump, the pro-crypto, I guess you can call him that, pro-crypto, certainly not as anti-crypto as perhaps the other side might be over there. So you can certainly interpret that as pro-crypto. The market certainly seems to be interpreting it that way. So a lot going on. Obviously, nearly 10,000 handles north of where we were this time last week. Also, north once again of that pivotal psychological level of 60K, sizably north, coming in on 4,000 handles north of it now. So, So what are your thoughts on this big move we're seeing in Bitcoin right now, sir? Yeah, it's interesting. So... There's kind of a couple things to contextualize here. So there's the sort of industry fundamentals, which really are around, we we saw a big liquidation of seized Bitcoin from the German government. We have the Mt. Gox distributions coming out soon as well, uh, you know, anytime this month. And so those are kind of the industry specific fundamentals. So if we look at the German government holdings, they started liquidating uh, about three weeks ago, and that's really when the Bitcoin prices started tanking. So there's three billion dollars of Bitcoin being sold on the open market. Some of it just sent directly to exchanges and kind of hitting the bid. So one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, how do governments liquidate these big holdings? We saw this in the U uh, in the U.S. back a few years ago. I think maybe 2015 or 2016, where they did sort of an uh, an auction for all the coins as opposed to sending it to an exchange and essentially hitting the bids. And so it was kind of interesting to see that that's how the German government did it today or over the past couple of weeks. And it really did have an impact on the prices of Bitcoin. So now that that sort of sell side supply has cleared, uh, very interesting to say, you know, to see potentially a a bottom out in in crypto. Uh, Then there's the other question of, well, does Mt. Gox have the same type of flows? They have $9 billion. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But Mt. Gox is less clear, you know, once they do the distributions, um, first of all, some of it's in fiat, some of it's in Bitcoin. So it's not all Bitcoin. And then the people who get the claims, are they going to just, you know, hit the bid right away or do they hold it or what's going on? So that one's a little bit less crystal clear. And then in sort of the macro world, we have uh, CPI last week, which came in uh pretty low, below expectations, which is good for the potential September rate cut at the FOMC meeting, which is supportive of hard assets. And then we had the labor market in the latest reading that was uh, worse than expected, which is, again, supportive of rate cuts, which is, again, supportive of of hard assets. And then we had what we just talked about earlier, sort of the geopolitical uh, or not geopolitical, but the presidential tensions um, and the assassination attempt and everything going on there. So 
everything is kind of lining up for perfect storm in terms of bullish crypto news. And that's really what we're seeing right now. So once we dig into the vol side of things, there's definitely some interesting opportunities, I believe, in the market. Isn't it crazy we're talking about Mt. Gox again? That seems like such a, a name rooted in the primordial ooze days of crypto, right? And not in a good way. And so the fact that it's coming up again now kind of brings back some bad memories, I'm sure, for a lot of people. But also kind of just shows you where we are right now in the crypto space. And that right now is a lot higher, listeners. Let's let's fire up Greg's platform, shall we? Amberdata.io, the place you want to go, listeners, to kick the tires and light the fires. If you did that, you'd see some of these vol numbers looking at right now. Let's start weekly as we are wont to do, listeners, and then work our way out. And then we'll get into a little skew and we'll see where the party takes us from there, listeners. But the weekly vol right now, actually coming in a little bit since last week. We had about a 54-15 on the seven-day vol. Uh, coming in to start of the show today, 52 and a half. So still pretty close, but coming in down a little over one and a half, about 1.65 points on the week out there. Again, we're seeing a lot of upside out there right now. So not exactly surprising, but also a lot of net movement at the end of the day. People always forget that, you know, you move to the upside or to the downside. At the end of the day, that equates to vol. People always conflate vol with downside, but a big move to the upside like we saw right now also translates into vol out there as well. So just something to bear in mind, enough of a move to keep us close to the level we were this time a week ago. Going out 30 days, which is more of a standardized vol metric across the board, uh, that vol getting a little bit frothier, as you might expect out there. We had about 50 and two thirds on the show a week ago. Coming in right now is about exactly 52. So ticking up a little over a point, about a point and a third out there on the week. And then going out six months, the hodlers, well, they're just having fun in the sun out there. It was 61 and a quarter this time a week ago coming into the start of the show this week at about a 60. So, Greg, we're mostly treading water across the board out here on the vol front. Does that surprise you given the size of the move or that also the fact that, you know, we were below 60K? That seems to be where vol is kind of ratcheting it up. Now that we're rallying back north of 60K, do you think that's to account for some of the vol treading water or easing we're seeing out here right now yeah so actually that, that's a great point i do think we could see vol move a lot higher so just to kind of contextualize on the sell-off move like you said when we broke 60k really on the back of the german holding liquidations we actually saw seven day realize hit like the 75 uh realized vol level um so theoretically we could see either a snapback that's similar in vol, which is kind of looking like what's happening right now, or we could have like a Mt. Gox event that could again move vol uh, that high up. So there's a, a potentially interesting opportunity there, given that if I'm looking at sort of the, the low point on the term structure at 50 for the uh, August 30th expiration, and for the seven day, we're looking at probably about 53. Um, so there's definitely a good argument to be made that, you know, potentially gamma pays here uh, for, for vol buyers. And so that's an interesting perspective. And then the other kind of thing that's interesting is if we're looking at the skew, you know, despite the sell off, long dated skew is pretty stable. Uh, but we've seen long dated skew as high as, you know, 25 delta risk reversal is how I'm looking at it. So uh, six month 25 delta risk reversal right now is about, you know, four points uh, to the calls over puts. But we've seen that as high as eight and 10 points um, earlier in the year. And so if we get some sort of kind of a snapback rally and we start to retest these all time highs going in end of year, not only is skew interesting and vol interesting, but then we also can get that basis, futures basis expansion again. So uh, earlier this year, the 90 day basis um, was as high as 5K over spot. Today, it's about 1500 over spot. So there's another, you know, call it three grand uh, in potential expansion. So all those factors together uh, could be a, an interesting setup for, for the long side. Well, Greg mentioned the skew. Let's get out there now, listeners, starting the weekly again and move our way out. This time last week, seven-day weekly skew was not surprisingly hanging out towards the bearish side. We had broken through 60K again. That seems to be a, a trigger point for a lot of folks out there. So hanging out about negative 5.6. Now that we're back north of it again, seems like calmer, cooler, saner heads are prevailing. Uh, we're still negative, but only slightly, not even a full point, 0.75. So I would consider that mostly flat out there. So not a lot of bias 
in the near dated option skew. Go out a little bit farther, 30 days, and we're seeing a similar story out there. We were about negative two and a quarter on the show this time a week ago. Coming in and start of the show today, it's mostly flat up about a positive one third right now. So again, I would consider that pretty much flat as well. So a lot of that near term bearish sentiment falling off the board there as well. And as Greg just broke down, long-term holders kind of just hanging out right now. They're positive four and a half, so four and a half point premium a week ago. Right now, it's four and a quarter, so pretty much treading water out there as well. So holders hanging out, kind of doing their thing out there. You know what's not doing their thing are some of these crypto-related products, the ETFs and others you folks like to trade as well. Just on the show last week, we had our buddy Mr. Bill, and he and I were both talking about Maybe uh, taking an opportunity to potentially try to buy the dip out here in products like Bitto. It goes to show you how fast these things move. Even by the end of the show, that opportunity we were looking at with, uh, you know, the 19 puts trading around 35 cents in Bitto, that was gone. And any bid to hit was was mostly gone. Bitto was starting to rally. And it has continued that rally now, trading 22 and a quarter, up two and a half points from where it was this time a week ago. So, all of that downside we saw last week, all that's gone now. And uh, the ADV uh, looking still fr- strong again, 85,000 contracts, even though they're blowing that away again today. Today's upside move uh, looking pretty good out there in Bitto land. There were already 111,000 contracts on the tape right before the start of the show. It's up to 116,000 right now. So looking back into the heady days of Bitto out there. The vol also managing to tick up one point at about a 56. So uh, intriguing stuff afoot out there. By the way, if you're wondering what is what is lighting up the tape out there today in Bitto land, let's find out, shall we, listeners? It's 8,400 of the July 23s going out this week. And those are opening. And then 7,300 of the July 22 puts also going out this week, also opening there. Uh, so intriguing kind of near-dated action both very close to where we're trading right now. It's not exactly a surprise. In terms of size positions, you know this. We've gone on about this for a while, listeners, in Bitto. It's the Jan 30s and the Jan 35s dominating the tape. 124,000 and 84,000 of those respectively out here. Mr. Greg, anything catching your eye in Bitto? Looking a little bit frothier and a lot more liquid out here this week, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I continue to think that this is an interesting product for essentially sort of that dividend play with sort of limited upside and sort of um, non-perfect uh, upside exposure, so to speak. And so I definitely still like the, all the same structures that we've talked about before, sort of like one by two types of structures, uh, potentially if you just want the long side exposure, like doing a call spread um, and, and not expecting too much. I mean, just for us to get back to $34, on Bitto, that's now about 100k on on Bitcoin. So just to just to give you kind of a good example, we were at 34 dollars when when Bitcoin was at about call it 72k. But now, given all the dividend payouts and all that, uh, the upside becomes more and more limited. So it's just something to keep in mind how you structure that, and then if you want to take advantage of that, again, those BitX products, love that um, the DK factor of you know drops. Uh, from a higher denominator than in rallies from a lower denominator from the 2x factor in a high vol asset is even more true. So there's, again, those structures are, are very interesting. Well, since you invoked it, we have to go there next. You are the reason we have this name on the show, Greg. You are entirely to blame for BitX making it onto the show because you invoke it every time you're on the show. So it seems fun to crunch it. Of course, listeners, if Bitto is not doing it for you, if Bitto is just too boring for you, uh, allow me to present Greg's favorite, BitX, of course, our levered Bitto friend out here, 2X Bitto to be precise. Thirty-four ninety right now, up about $7.20 since our last show. So doing what it's supposed to do, outperforming Bitto in whatever direction Bitto is moving in. Uh, the ADV, surprisingly, still hanging out at 15000 That's unchanged on the week, so no joy there. Even though today we got 35,000 contracts on the tapes. So I got a feeling... That's going to be changing out here in terms of the big dogs for action out here. Again, it looks like it's near dated upside, which is not surprising. It's about 6,000 of the July 34 is going up today and about 3,100 of the July 35s and about 1,500 of the July 40. So all that's firing this week and all of that opening as well. So upside is hard to argue with it. We're up over seven handles on the week. In terms of size positions, Greg and I have talked about this before. 
the number one size position in BidX options is still the Jan 2026 70 puts, seven O's, 7,100 of those. Those always bring a smile to my face. Uh, number two, we have 4,600 of the Jan 15 puts. And then number three, about 3,500 of the Jan 20 2 calls. So intriguing positions across the board. Uh, Greg, you kind of just mentioned your preference for BidX and some of the decay out there. I remind our listeners, why is this your preferred vehicle out here right now? Yeah, definitely. So for the decay plays, and you'll see like a lot of ETFs like this. So like uh, a lot of the 2X ETFs suffer from this. But basically, just remember, if your stock holding drops 50%, it needs to rally 100% to get back to even. And so once you do a 2X factor, um, you know, then the drop the the after after a drop the needed rally to get back to even is even greater and so that's why we get sort of these tracking errors because every time you drop in value you drop from a higher denominator and this is even more pronounced and more true on a high vol asset because that that compounding effect uh, occurs more frequently and by a larger magnitude so so as mark alluded to you know the biggest position in bit x is the uh, call it, you know, year and a half, $70 put. So deep in the money put right now, BidX is about uh, $35. But that thing is is meant to, to essentially pay out. Like uh, we wouldn't be surprised, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see BidX potentially have to, to reverse split because it starts to trade like $4 or $3 or something by the time we get there, even though Bitcoin might perform well just from that that decay factor. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're training these products. And um, it can create really interesting structures. If you're holding Bitcoin in your portfolio elsewhere, you can do things like uh, buy the 50 calls, sell two of the 100 calls, something like that. Because it's such a high vol asset, th those types of trades can, can be put on at very favorable prices. So you're talking the erosion trade, kind of like we see with a lot of the volatility ETPs as well. The UVXs, the VXXs, the UVXYs, they have that negative roll yield and that inevitably erodes them away over time. For our listeners who may not be familiar. Exactly. So you don't like the longer term put play like that? You like the more upside call vertical instead? Uh, so it's, yeah, I mean, you could do it both ways. I don't necessarily like the longer term put play just because it's, um, it's kind of like a, a very... Well, there's a kind of a different biases with the upside one by two call. I still have like that decay bias built in, but I do think, you know, crypto rallies, I'm kind of bullish uh, crypto. So it's one of those things Well, I'll either put that thing at a premium and like at a credit. So if it completely expires worthless and I still get to collect a credit, but there's still like this kind of like window of opportunity if uh, if crypto rallies enough and the decay uh, makes makes it so that we're still below the, the short uh, additional unit. There's still some sort of like upside window there. So that's typically why I like that structure. There you go, listeners. So if you're confused by any of that, make sure you check out uh, some of our educational content here on the network, like Options Bootcamp or shows like Volatility Views. If you, you feel you're ready for that next level out there, because we talk about that erosion play quite a bit out there. What is not eroding this week, listeners, is Mara, though, just lighting it up. In fact, it was in our top 10 most actives for the entire options market when we were breaking it down earlier today on the option block. So Mara, one of these names you kind of ignore at your peril. It's just putting up the numbers. 2470 as we kicked off the show, up over five handles again, 510 since our last show last week. I've said it before, this name has been just fascinating to watch over the last three to six months. Down to about 15, up to about 30, back down to about 15. Now it looks like it's making its way back up to... 30 adjacent again, uh, volume wise, ADV 275,000. That's nothing to sneeze at, even though it is down 7,000 on the week today, though, making up for lost time already 500 and man, this thing's putting up numbers, 564,000 contracts on the tape before the show even started. That has already skyrocketed now to 600 and 11,000. So maybe by the end of the show, we can even get to 3x that ADV. We're already at about 2.5x out there. So it does seem like that ADV is going to be moving north, just like the vol. The vol's at a 90 right now. It's up four points out there on the week. We got to look really quickly. The, the size positions, we got 36,000 of the SEP 30s for number one, and then 25,000 of the Jan 30s for number two. I pointed that out before. It does seem like the near-term upside has kind of petered out around 30. 
it does seem like folks have have noticed that level out there as well because it's reflected uh, quite a bit in the size options positions. Speaking of size, we got size going up today, listeners. 31,000 of the Jan 25s. That's the top position right now. Top most active option, I should say, out there right now in Mara. Number two, 24,000 of the Jan 23s. Uh, number three, 24,000 as well, the Jan 22. So it's pretty much just a call strip here, listeners. Number four, 20,000 of the AUG 25s. And rounding out the top five here on an explosive volume day, 18, almost 19,000 of the July 22 puts. My goodness. Uh, Greg, I know in the past you haven't really been that into Mara just because there's there's so many other things polluting this name. It's not a one-to-one -one or close to one-to-one -to -one crypto play the way Bitto or BitX, some of these other tracking vehicles are. So I can certainly see that gumming up the works for a lot of people, but volume and liquidity wise, you almost can't ignore this name anymore. Greg, what are your thoughts on this just explosive day yet again here in Mara? Yeah, that's that's a great point. And what's really interesting about Mara is, you know, if we want to start thinking about crypto mining, uh, Bitcoin mining and all that, um, and, you know, reshoring crypto and being sure it's mined here on shore in the U.S., um, well, that's kind of a very specific play and use case for, uh, you know, Bitcoin exposure, essentially, for a portfolio. So there's kind of a, a, a different dynamic than just pure crypto in this in this name that makes it interesting. So, you know, one of the things that we like to do and that we'll, we'll be providing to customers pretty soon here is the ability to compare the vol surface of altcoins and Bitcoin and traditional crypto related equities like Mara or Coinbase and things like that. Relative vol is, is going to be an interesting type of trade here, especially when we get these spot Bitcoin ETF options. So definitely worth keeping an eye on this and how it trades and the spot vol correlation and the beta versus Bitcoin, because there will be some some good opportunities here. You mentioned Coinbase. That's the other big one. We don't really get to that one very often on the show just because we have limited time here on the show. And there's only so many non-direct one-to-one Bitcoin-related names we could talk about. So we usually tend to choose Mara. Coin having a good day today as well. 244 even up 26 handles today or nearly 12%. Again, putting up numbers, 314,000, but also about half of what Mara's doing, right? Listen to this. So at the end of the day, we only have so much time. So we usually end up going towards Mara, but Coinbase out there slinging some size out there today. Speaking of slinging size, what's slinging size in the altcoin universe, listeners? I guess it's time to find out. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, let's do it, listeners. It's time for the altcoin universe where we explore everything beyond the big dog, which is Bitcoin. Except for right now, we kick things off one of my favorite segments of the show, just the absolute slugfest. That is the the top 10 from a market cap out here in crypto, especially the bottom half of that top 10. Man, these names are just fighting it out day after day, week after week, just for your entertainment and indeed for your crypto wallet listeners. Uh, number 10 this week, it's Cardano coming in 15.6 billion worth of market cap. So again, kind of showing you that, that rising crypto tide is lifting all the boats this week because it cost you. 15.6 billion to break into the top 10 this week. That's roughly two to three billion more than it was not too long ago. So again, crypto just upsize across the board. Number nine, our old friend Doge hanging out at about 17 and a half billion worth of market cap. Number eight, it's Tuncoin because of course it is. Greg's favorite out there, Tuncoin. Man, I have to stop this guy from talking about Tuncoin. He just talks about it non-stop here on the show. He'd hijack the whole show with Tuncoin if I let him. Number eight, Tuncoin, 18.7 billion worth of market cap. Number seven, XRP, kind of having a wild week, 29.8 billion out there, hanging out almost kind of unched, but uh, having some moves out there, which is, again, we don't see that too often. Number six, USD coin, 33.8 billion. Number five, it's Solana, getting some of its groove back, 72.3 billion. Number four, it's BNB, 85.3 billion. Number three, it's Tether. 112.6 billion. Number two, you know what it is. It's ETH back up over the 400 billion level. 409 billion worth of market cap, to be precise. And the number one, the big dog out there, looking a lot bigger this week. It's Bitcoin, 1.25 trillion with a T 
worth of market cap, listeners. Uh, let's get out there now to number two. And this is another one. It was fascinating to watch last week because ETH was hanging out exactly at 3,000 as we kicked off the show. So every little tick above or below 3,000, we saw that skew go crazy. We saw the vol start to tick up. So it just shows you how important these psychological levels are. Uh, coming in this week, that's no longer the case. 3,404, up a whopping 404 handles on the week. So again, a lot of action out here in ETH this week. The low, again, pretty much during our show last week, right around 3,000 and the high, pretty much right now so far, 3,404. So a lot to unpack. Uh, Greg, almost lost in the shuffle of everything else we've been talking about out of here, all these broad macro crypto trends it does seem like we are progressing even closer to the launch of some sort of ETH etf out here so that certainly seems to be accounting for some of this upside move in addition to the rising tide just lifting all the boats out here what are your thoughts on this big move away from 3000 and ether yeah i mean i view it kind of just similar to the bitcoin move really like a um a nicely correlated move but obviously ETH was a big underperformer year to date. So there's more of a potential to, to try to test new all time highs now that the fundamentals behind ETH are more in line with Bitcoin, especially with respect to the ETF. Uh, one thing that is important to keep in mind when we're thinking about Ethereum, though, is that Ethereum is still the, to the, the token is still the underlying sort of value play for the ecosystem. The ecosystem itself, it still isn't completely clear, you know, what's a security and what's not a security. And and if projects can't build on Ethereum and, and Web3 development can't continue because of, you know, um, regulatory reasons, then the value prop of Ethereum is less interesting. So there's still kind of that question out in the air, but at least from the spot ETF um, prospects, that's looking a lot more in line with Bitcoin. So from that logic, you know, it, it would make sense that ETH makes new all-time highs as well. Now let's fire up the Amber Data Machine, see what we're seeing from a vol and from a skew perspective, listeners. And right now, ETH vol moving aggressively away from the 3,000 level does seem like that has calmed some folks out there because vol coming in on the weekly front, certainly. 66 and a half is where we were hanging out this time last week. Down below 60 right now, down to about a 59. So vol coming in. On the weekly front, same deal on the 30-day front. 64 and a quarter is where we were a week ago. Right now, 61 and a quarter is coming down about exactly three points there. And even the long-term holders sighing a little bit, taking a little bit of a relaxing breath of fresh air. 69.40 is where we were this time last week. So they were threatening a 70 vol a little bit longer term, which is kind of interesting. Coming off that a little bit this week at about a 68 and three quarters. Mr. Greg, anything catching your eye from your own vol data here in ETH, sir? Yeah, absolutely. So really what's one thing that's really interesting to look at is the relative vol between Bitcoin and ETH. So ETH is about 10 points over Bitcoin, but all of 2023 and uh, a good portion of the first quarter of 2021, oh, excuse me, of 2024, uh, it was about even. And, and Bitcoin actually had exceeded ETH vol. I think that was the outlier um, in the sense that like ETH has a smaller market cap. There's more, it takes less money to move it more. Um, so theoretically ETH should have a little bit of a premium in terms of, of potential volatility. Uh, but the counter impact there is what we've seen a lot of uh, covered call selling in Ethereum from people who are buying ETH, staking ETH and selling covered call against it since the Shanghai upgrade. So there is an argument to be made that the premium of ETH vol versus Bitcoin vol isn't always justified, especially if there's an overhang of supply. So I'd be interested to see if this 10 vol point premium actually materializes. Otherwise, there's probably some interesting types of relative vol trades to be made, especially if uh, the ETF hasn't started trading yet, which means that there's not an avenue of potential investment funds yet. Um, so take all that stuff together, and I think that's an interesting opportunity. Intriguing opportunities out here in the skew as well. Let's see if we can find some listeners. Let's start weekly and work our way out. Last show, as I said, we were just we were flipping right around 3,000. So these skew numbers were moving all over the place. As the show started, we had about a negative three, so slightly bearish, obviously. Uh, that is mostly gone. We're at about a positive half right now, so mostly flat. 
out there, but a lot of that near-term bearish sentiment, obviously in the rearview mirror now that we moved 400 handles away from the 3,000 strike. Uh, the same thing being reflected out here on the monthly skew. We're at about a positive one, so mostly flat on the show. A week ago, again, we were kind of vacillating around, so those numbers were very fluid. Uh, right now, we're at about a positive two, so looking a little bit more optimistic. Uh, the holders out there a little bit longer term, six-month skew, actually coming in a little bit. We're positive six on the show this time last week, so they weren't spooked by the threatening 3,000 level. Coming in right now at about a positive five, so an intriguing evolution there. Greg, anything catching your eye on the ETH skew front this week, sir? Yeah, absolutely. So if I'm looking at the skew right now, I still – so if I compare that to – for example, Bitcoin, the long-term skew is about even for both. Uh, but what's really interesting is that if there is sort of this altcoin seasonality rotation and the relative vol comes back in to uh, Ethereum, well, then uh, essentially those sort of upside calls versus puts uh, are relatively interesting and attractive. And the argument of you know making new all-time highs or at least testing new all-time highs, given that Bitcoin has already across a new all-time high territory really makes that long dated skew interesting. So right now, 180 day, 25 Delta risk reversal trading about four or five ball points over. I could definitely see that continue to rally to 10 or 12 points over. Uh, should we start going into the new all-time high territory uh, and get the sort of long dated basis expansion in Ethereum as well? Never undersell the hodlers out there, listeners, as we run through some of the rest of the altcoin universe here this week. Let's kick it off in Solana. Like I said, getting some of their groove back this week. 136.82 is where it was a week ago. Right now, 155.42 when we kicked off the show. Up 18.6 handles on the week, so that's a pretty sizable move out there. Uh, XRP, like we said, also kind of maybe waking up from its slumber a little bit. It was about a little bit shy of 43 cents on the show last week, 42.8 cents. Coming in right now, 53.4 cents, up over a dime. That's a huge move. We haven't seen XRP moving like that in quite some time. You know, Greg, that, that brings up as well. I noticed playing around with the Amber Data platform, you have a lot more data now on all things XRP. I, I found it kind of funny in the past, the notion of a options market on a sub 50 cent underlying, but it seems like it's starting to gain a little bit of steam. I know you've been intrigued by it as well. I'll let our listeners know what, why you're so intrigued by the notion of options on a 53 cent XRP, sir. Yeah, exactly. Well, the idea is that you can, you know, 50 cents for an option is usually kind of cheap. So you can basically get the infinity option by just buying the underlying for 50 cents. <laughs> um, and so you don't, you almost don't need options on, on the underlying asset since it's so cheap. So that's, that's kind of the funny bit of it. Um, the argument for trading options on XRP, um, you know, right now, if I look at realized fall, it's actually trading above implied when I'm talking to, if I'm looking at seven day by about 30 points. So, you know, maybe there's this argument to be made that altcoin season could make XRP kind of, you know, quickly rally to a dollar type of deal. Uh, and then, you know, optionality gets interesting in that type of environment, but it's uh, it's not necessarily as appealing as trading options on a sixty-four thousand dollar <laughs> asset, where owning the underlying is is a big chunk of change. There's a lot of hardcore, longtime contributors on our network, Mr. Greg, who have been in the derivatives industry for decades, who would take great offense at us even discussing options on a sub fifty cent underlying. <laughs> as you said, it is the infinite call for about fifty cents. So why wouldn't you buy that? But nonetheless. Uh, there, there is some intrigue to be had there. Certainly XRP, if it's going to be moving a dime like this, uh, then there might be some intriguing action to be had out there. Uh, intriguing action on the Dogecoin front as well. 10.7 cents on the show a week ago. 12 cents right now is up a little over a penny, about 1.3 cents. Litecoin, 64.5 cents last week, 70.65 right now. is up a little over six handles on the week. Cardano, 36.4 cents last week. 43.4 cents this week. Polka dot six bucks even last week, 636 right now. And I know Greg's other favorite, when he's not slinging ton coin, he's just loading up on all things Shiba Inu. Last week it was a whopping a million zeros, one six. This week coming in a million zeros, one eight out there. So up ever so slightly, still unfortunately no Shiba Lambos in the offing. Greg, I know whenever you join us, 
You've always got a few intriguing altcoin in your back pocket that you're keeping an eye on. Anything you want to share with us this week, sir? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, very excited about Shiba Inu uh, <laughs> getting options someday. That, that talk about trading options on the low. <laughs> now you're just now everything is on his head, sir. You flipped the whole world on his head with Shiba <laughs> options. Um, but actually, in terms of altcoins, not necessarily in terms of owning underlying altcoins, but uh, Power Trade and BitMEX recently collaborated and launched options on a bunch of different altcoins. So that's very exciting. So if you want to trade like Pepe coin options and things like that, um, that's available at Power Trade, uh, Power Trade slash BitMEX. Um, you can visit either site to have access to those options. And so that's kind of a nice, interesting phenomenon. This is something that we're working at in Amber Data as well in terms of creating uh, volatility surfaces with our friend Ewan Sinclair for all sorts of altcoins. And I really think the industry um, wants to trade optionality on all this stuff. So this is going to be an interesting, uh, you know, next 12 months as we see sort of these offerings sort sort of expand out more. But if you want to trade Dogecoin options, you can do that now today at, at BitMEX or those Pepe coins or a bunch of different other ones as well. Um, and so that's definitely something that's interesting. Are you telling me I can look forward to Pepe analytics coming soon from Amber Data, sir? Is that what you're telling me? That is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I can't wait to see the weekly skew in Pepe coin options, listeners. Again, everything old is new again and perhaps intriguing and perhaps flipped on its head when it comes to options on the crypto market. Most names would be delisted if they were sub $1, for, <laughs> let alone 50 cents for an extended period of time or Shiba. You know, fractions of a cent, but uh, that's where we are in the crypto options game. Unfortunately, that music also means we're pretty much at the end of the crypto rundown for this week. Mr. Gray, you kind of already gave us a fun tease. Everyone can get all excited about the forthcoming analytics for Pepe coin coming from your platform. In the meantime, while we're waiting hotly for Pepe coin to show up, what else can we find over there at Amber Data, sir? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Q3, we'll have, uh, we're launching out soon the relative vol analytics with the crypto-related equities. So again, Mara stock versus Darabit Bitcoin options, things like that. So that's very interesting. For our customers, we've launched a new Python SDK with a pre-built notebook. So what's really interesting is we have a GUI. You can check out all the charts and all that stuff there, which is great. That's kind of a kind of a more standard offering, but then we have our enterprise clients, we have APIs, and everything that you see on the GUI is you know, fed by an endpoint, and we've rebuilt everything in pre-built notebooks, so you can explore all the charts as if it was a GUI uh, from just direct API access, everything's pre-built, you can just run that thing right, right out of the gate, so that's very interesting. And then outside of that, um, as we alluded to earlier, we'll have some interesting altcoin volatility surfaces that we've built with you and Sinclair. We've also done some ARB free uh, vol surfaces using SVI model for Bitcoin and ETH. Uh, that white paper is gonna be released actually in the next week or so. And then um, we have our standard kind of uh, old school offering, which is our, our weekly newsletter at amberdata.substack.com. We have our Twitter at Genesis Vol. And then we have our YouTube channel. If you just uh, type in Amber Data derivatives in YouTube, you will see that. There you go. No shortage of places for you folks to follow along with Greg and the team. See all of the, not just the analytics, but the cool content they're putting out there in between episodes of this show. This is going to do it for the network today. Uh, back again tomorrow. We'll be back for you pro folks with another fun pro Q&A. Got a double dose of pro Q&As coming your way, I should say, this week. So stay tuned to the pro, the optionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to learn more about all of that fun. Uh, back again next Monday, another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. 
Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 